large guns and missiles may always pop into our minds when discussing bursting tanks, but this job can be done uniquely using a deadly weapon called the sensor-fused weapon. Initially developed as the Cluster Bomb Unit 97, or CBU-97, which which was unguided and quite inaccurate when released from high altitudes. It was modified and improved into the CBU-105 with the addition of GPS and tail guidance fins, which made it a very accurate precision guided munition or PGM. The policy of tank busting by the US Air Force centers around this weapon, which is dropped by various platforms. The CBU-105 cluster bomb is a devastating tank killer. One bomb can carpet an area of 1,500 by 500 feet, or roughly 15 acres. But unlike traditional cluster bombs, the CBU-105 is considered a smart bomb. The weapon can destroy multiple moving or stationary threats with minimal collateral damage while leaving no hazardous unexploded ordnance on the battlefield. Its BLU-108 submunition cylinders use infrared and laser sensors to seek and destroy targets by pattern matching. If it fails to find a target, the skeet warhead within the bomb self-destructs. And if the self-destruct system fails, a backup timer disables the skeet. The disabled skeets that make it to the ground also have an inert feature, which makes them resistant to exploding via tampering, according to Textron. The 40 skeets scan an area of 1,500 by 500 feet, or 460 meters by 150 meters, using infrared and laser sensors, seeking targets by pattern matching. When a skeet finds a target, it fires an explosively formed penetrator to destroy it. If a skeet fails to find a target, it self-destructs 50 feet or 15 meters above the ground. If this fails, a backup timer disables the skeet. These features are intended to avoid later civilian casualties from unexploded munitions and result in an unexploded ordnance rate of less than 1%. As the CBU-97 approaches its designated aim point, the dispenser skin is severed into three panels by an explosive cutting charge. The slipstream peels away these panels, exposing the 10 BLU-108 submunitions. An airbag ejects five forward submunitions, then five in the aft bay. Following a preset timeline, the submunitions deploy parachutes so that they are spaced about 100 feet or 30 meters apart. Then each submunition releases its chute, fires a rocket motor that stops its descent, spins it on its longitudinal axis, and releases skates 90 degrees apart in pairs. With each turn, the skater makes a coning motion to scan a circular area on the ground. The laser sensor detects changes in apparent terrain height, such as the contour of a vehicle. At the same time, infrared sensors detect heat signatures, such as those emitted by a vehicle's engine. When the combination of height contours and heat signatures indicative of a target is detected, the skeet detonates, firing an explosively formed penetrator or EFP down into the target at high speed sufficient to penetrate armor plating and destroy what is protected by it. Even well-armored vehicles, such as main battle tanks with massive armor protection on the front and sides, are only lightly armored above and relatively easily penetrated. Each bomb can spread penetrators over 15 acres, 61,000 square meters or more. According to an ABC News consultant, an attack by this bomb would effectively stop an armored convoy moving down a road. While the bomb was designed during the Cold War for fighter bombers flying at a low altitude below radar cover to attack Soviet tanks, a single B-52 high-altitude heavy bomber can destroy an entire armored division with these bombs. Whereas in the past, dozens of aircraft would have had to drop hundreds of bombs for the same effect. The CBU-97, or CBU-105 version, is deployed by tactical aircraft from altitudes of 200 to 20,000 feet, or 60 to 6,100 meters above ground level, or AGL, at speeds of 250 to 650 knots, or 460 to 1,200 kilometers per hour. 
The CVU-105 is a unique and versatile weapon limited to destroying enemy armor and other targets. Surface-to-air or SAM sites are a big threat to combat aircraft in a conflict. To neutralize a widely spread chain of SAM sites, which includes tens of launchers, radars, and support vehicles, over a hundred guided missiles carried by 30 to 40 aircraft are needed. Instead, two F-15E fighters or a single bomber can drop these guided cluster bombs from high altitudes and destroy the targets effectively. A cluster bomb of this type can shred SAM launchers and radars with a high level of accuracy and effectiveness. Many CBU-105s can stop an enemy armored division in its tracks and disable every vehicle. These 450 kilogram or 1,000 pounds of GPS-guided bombs cost over $700,000 per unit. The USAF uses them on combat aircraft like the F-15-16, A-10, and B-1-2-52. India has also integrated them with the Jaguar. The weapon has been in production since 1992 and was first deployed but not used during Operation Allied Force when NATO entered the Kosovo War. Sensor-fused weapons were first fired in combat during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Such highly effective PGMs dominate modern warfare. They cannot be countered easily, but in the future, many countries will devise ways to counter such weapons. Currently, any adversary facing this weapon has no defense against it, and the only solution would be to shoot down the aircraft before it can release these smart bombs. In 2010, the U.S. government announced the sale of 512 CBU-105 sensor-fused weapons to India. The expected platform is the Jaguar. Saudi Arabia has also requested the CBU-105. In May 2015, Human Rights Watch reported on and criticized the Saudi use of the CBU-105 SFW during the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen. The United States last bought SFWs in 2007, after which they continued to be produced for export. In September 2016, Textron announced it would no longer have the weapon, citing low demand as well as international controversy over the use of cluster munitions. <laughs>